Hi, I am Sujata and I will be talking about our paper Painter, which is on automatic extraction of text bands for generating art centered questions. This is joint work with uh, National Gallery Singapore and few of us from National University of Singapore. In this talk, I will be doing a quick introduction to GLAM context first. Basically, what's our motivation for using QG or question generation and reading comprehension, how we can use these. Uh, models and uh, I will before delving into the art quest interface which we designed in collaboration with the National Gallery um, after which I'll be talking more about the precise algorithm painter where we combine uh, where we discuss how to combine Wikipedia with domain specific words for ranking text bands from artwork passages um, in Particular, we will also discuss how to extract these domain specific dictionaries using something called distance supervision. After which, we'll go into evaluation results and observations. Before we go into the actual talk, for a quick background on question answering and question generation, uh, if you are aware, a lot of progress has been made on both question answering and reading comprehension, as well as question generation tasks using deep learning models in the NLP community. So for question answering and reading comprehension, uh, the goal is you have a corpus and you want to find answer to a question, and usually within a in the context of a passage which acts as evidence for the answer and uh, in question generation it's the reverse problem where you have a passage and probably optionally an answer span or what we call as a queue and your goal is to generate a question centered around the span so for instance here is an example passage and uh, it describes a painting by Rachel Royush uh, who's a celebrated uh, Dutch painter and with the question generation module, if you specify this particular answer span, you might be able to generate questions like who was Rachel Royer, or what was her profession, what nationality, and so on. As opposed to in reading comprehension, where if you have a specific question like what nationality, and so on, you can extract answer spans from within the passage. So the question here is like, how can we use this existing um, question answering, reading comprehension and question generation models to, in context of GLAMS. Uh, GLAMS stands for galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. And uh, the idea is like, uh, from the gallery perspective or the museum perspective, you want to be uh, guiding and educating the visitors, or let them have a good experience on their museum visits. And for this purpose, uh, often human docents are um, employed um, or if they are like not very frequent, you at least have something called audio tours. But uh, the human docents, of course, are dependent on humans. And in audio tour case, it's like a passive one way thing. And uh, as a substitute, you could conceive of something like a QA chatbot using existing question answering um, models. But oftentimes, you cannot really expect visitors to know precisely what to ask or how to interact with these bots. And um, uh, as opposed to having something which initiates and guides the conversations to enable interactive discovery for the visitors, uh, to enable them to appreciate artworks better. So in our um, paper, we are looking at how we can use expert crafted passages, which often accompany artworks in learning uh, what kind of guiding questions you can ask the visitor. So in this regard, we developed uh, something called the ArtQuest interface in collaboration with National Gallery Singapore. And ArtQuest is an interactive quiz-based tool. And uh, this was largely motivated by a previous user study that uh, was done in context of uh, Athena chatbot, which is like the previous version um, of the chatbot employed in National Gallery uh, as part of a special exhibit. Um, the details of these are, can be found in the paper. And some of the things we found in the user study is like, um, if you ask, uh, 
if you give them handcrafted evoking questions, often the UV viewer curiosity is peaked and they start to absorb more of the visual elements of the paintings. And in general, when they are examining the paintings, they don't tend to carefully peruse the passages accompanying the artwork. But in case they do get interesting interested in the passage, uh, sorry, the painting, then they end up reading the passage. And the other thing which we noticed in the previous version of the chatbot is often people do not know how to initiate questions on an artwork, like what to ask. So we realized it was crucial to catch the viewer interest uh, early on by using some sort of interaction which uses, which is centered around the artistic and visual aspects of the painting. So here is a quick uh, snapshot of our ArtQuest interface. And you can see that there's a painting well, also shown here is the passage accompanying the artwork. And, and then we have a reading comprehension and a QG model acting in tandem so as to interact with the user in a quiz-like fashion. So we, our goal is to make it sort of fun experience for the visitor of the gallery. And um, as we described in the on the previous slide, that one thing we noticed was it was important to catch the visitor attention by focusing on the visual and the artistic aspects of a painting. So to this end, we developed what is called uh, the painter algorithm, which forms the major focus of this paper. And the goal is like you want to choose artistic spans from these accompanying artwork passages. And then you want to do QG or question generation using these answer spans as cues. And we also have a question answering model, which also is capable of answering other questions that the users might be having. Our algorithm painter is an extension of TextRank uh, to handle artworks or paintings to be more precise. And uh, the steps in painter are very similar to key phrase extraction. So essentially you have a document or a passage which describes a painting and your goal is to extract text spans like subs a candidate set of text spans from this document and score each span based on proximity to a painting's lexicon. And then we choose the top uh, spans to do question generation. Now, if you notice, this is like a completely unsupervised method. So we don't really have training data to get like to annotate a lot of uh, spans and then do question generation. So in that sense, this is a low resource context. So how far can we do or how well can we do using this unsupervised approach is one of the questions uh, we are addressing in this paper. And this is in contrast to most works, existing studies going on in QG right now in the NLP community, uh, where the focus is on how to do better QG given like a labeled uh, data set as opposed to like how do you improve uh, like Q generation or context selection to do like uh, QG which targets a certain kind of questions. And um, Uh, for a quick background on uh, random walk models, uh, they are essentially used to measure something called vertex importance, and they're very popular in the web and social network community. So supposing there's a graph, and um, the way you measure vertex importance, one way to measure vertex importance is you uh, look at how well connected they are to other important vertices. So for instance, like if you're an important person, you are there's a higher chance that you're connected to other important persons and so on. So this notion can be uh, translated to word graphs as well, and uh, which was what was done in text rank algorithm. And um, the idea is like, if you have this graph um, of interconnected vertices and you start doing random walk on this graph, uh, in the limit where you stop, um, 
uh, the the vertex where you stop captures a uh, notion of the probability of stopping at a vertex captures the notion of importance of this vertex so in our case we also want to pin down this vertex importance uh, to make instead of it being like independent we want it dependent on the text pan against which we are measuring um, and also the lexicon so these are the extensions we make to text rank in our paint algorithm So I'm uh, skipping the math in the interest of uh, time and focus. Uh, but essentially, uh, as opposed to text rank, where uh, you can restart from any vertex in the graph, the change that we make is that you are only concerned with words in a given text span. Uh, so we restrict the jumps to choosing words in a given text span. So once you make this change, the stopping probability is uh, given by the formula shown on the screen. And uh, so what's the probability of stopping at a word uh, if you're walking with ran if you're doing random walk with three starts uh, restricted to this span and then once you extend it to the whole lexicon the painter score for a span can be uh, computed using uh, the second formula on the screen so if you look at this it's basically painter becomes like a lexicon sensitive variation of text rank on word graphs so in some sense it's very similar to the topic sensitive variation of page rank if you're familiar with it uh, which was designed for web graphs. And at this point, another question we, we might have is like, OK, so we have uh, words for a text span, but where are we getting words of the lexicon? Is it expert compiled and so on? And uh, we uh, compile this lexicon using what is called distance supervision, which is our alternative to expert created lists. And the idea is, how can you use document level? Can, can you use document level labels to compute word level labels? So this is the question which is often and address and distance supervision works. So in our case, we used uh, Wikipedia once again, where um, if you're familiar with Wikipedia, it also every page in Wikipedia is also assigned to um, certain categories, and the categories are arranged in a hierarchy. So what we did was we take, um, if we consider all the documents in the Wikipedia and only the documents, the subset of documents which is assigned to the category paintings, what you can do is compute the probability of a word being associated with painting documents versus uh, any other random document. So we use this probability of seeing the word across all categories categories versus the paintings categories and just compile uh, the list of words such that the probability with the paintings documents is significantly higher than like uniform probability across all categories. And we found interestingly that although this is a simple idea, the automatically extracted words for our lexicon were quite um, high quality in the sense that they seem to be very, very uh, specific to art related or paintings related documents. So for instance, here are the top words which are uh, shown on this slide uh, based on their PMI scores. And if you look at these words, uh, and if you're familiar with them, they are referring to things like artistic styles, genres, and some pose-related terms, and so on. So uh, we found that uh, if we use the category labels uh, in Wikipedia for painting specifically, we are able to actually extract words which are highly representative of painting passages. And on the right uh, are also some words where the the words with painting probability significantly higher, like 10 times higher than like uniform probability. And you see that uh, it has words like portrait, canvas, composition, and so on, which is uh, very likely to be like a painting related word. So moving on to some experiments, uh, now that we have Painter for, star, uh, for scoring text spans uh, against the lexicon, can we think of other unsupervised baselines? And uh, of course, we can think of some really straightforward, simpler baselines, for instance, using the WordNet graph. So uh, WordNet has, is a 
popular resource in the natural language processing community and it is it has also been used to measure similarity between words and in our case um, uh, and one of the often used similarity measure is the shortest path on the word and graph. And we use the same thing. We use the shortest path similarity between a uh, text span, like the words in a text span and the painting related synsets. And also the other obvious way is just compute the overlap with the lexicon. Now that we have a paintings lexicon, can't we just look for like a Jacquard score or something with the, with the words in the text span? So the precise formula can be found in the paper. And I skipped here in the interest of time. For evaluation, uh, we collected two data sets. The first one was uh, from the National Gallery of Singapore, and it, it, it comprises of expert return articles on paintings by this pioneer artist called George Chen. And the other publicly available uh, set of articles were retrieved from Enzo Clip by Encyclopedia Britannica, and these are articles describing Renaissance artworks. And these are again linked, uh, the links are provided in the paper. And uh, both these sets uh, of articles were written by art experts, and they are uh, descriptive of specific paintings in the collection. And here are some statistics. And uh, one thing to notice here is like, uh, uh, the data sets are pretty small, and which is also a big reason why we can't really use uh, supervised models because uh, uh, in addition to the labeling costs, of course, and uh, and also why we prefer like a non-supervised method which can deal with this low resource context. And um, in addition to the less number of articles, even the sentences or the article sizes or these passages are really small, ranging from three to 10 sentences in the first data set and seven to 15 in the second data set. And uh, in this table, we also show ultimately the number of questions that were extracted by our QG module for each of these data sets. And on average, we have a decent number of questions which can be used to interact with uh, the visitors as part of the ArtQuest interface. And here's some quick results uh, comparing uh, the painter extracted spans with the other baselines, the lexical overlap and the word in it uh, baseline. And you can see here that painter is able to extract text spans from painting articles uh, significantly better as shown by the precision at case cause. So I just wanted to mention here that we are interested in capturing the visitor uh, attention. So it's important to um, showcase these artistic and visual questions early on in the interaction because uh, that that apparently is of more interest to the visitors as uh, as seen in our user study results so which is also the reason we are evaluating uh, the performance at top uh, positions like k equal to three and so on and here's also another anecdotal uh, example for the passage shown early on in the presentation. And you can see that the words or rather the spans extracted by painter are more representative of the artistic content of the painting as opposed to uh, something like life paintings or viewed as activities and so on, which are extracted by the other baseline. So the uh, we noticed that uh, essentially the other baselines suffer in cases where there's no direct overlap either in WordNet or in the lexicon, and which is effectively um, harnessed uh, due to the interconnected edges in the word coherence graph by painter. And since we are using these spans to generate questions, we also uh, used uh, a user study for evaluating the kind of questions which were generated by a model. I just wanted to mention here that the QG and the RC module that we are using uh, are basically off-the-shelf state-of-the-art models. So they are essentially from ProfitNet and Allen and LP, which were state-of-the-art at that time. And uh, we used the questions generated by ProfitNet and did a user study, uh, gathered crowd annotations in one case and expert annotations in the case of the 
of Georgia Chen uh, data set. And um, essentially, people were asked to rank or rate these questions along uh, four dimensions. Fluency is the question grammatically correct. Relevance is it really related to the artistic aspect of the net? Uh, artwork um, is it answerable and how correct is the machine extracted answer so th this gives us a sense of how uh, uh, we are doing with respect to the art quest um, the interactions on the art quest interface And once again, here's the results of the human annotation studies. As you can see, once again, for both the data sets, the, the scores for painter extracted spans, or the, rather the questions generated using the painter extracted spans are significantly higher on the top five questions uh, on both the data sets. And uh, painter outperforms the baselines along all dimensions pretty much. And um, basically, the idea is if you do a better span selection, it improves the end to end performance. Because because it leads to better QG and higher relevance scores. And better questions are also often more answerable. So the reading comprehension module can also do better by extracting more correct answers from the passage and so on. Uh, to conclude, uh, we discussed how to use question generation and answering to design an interactive aid for a low resource context. And specifically, we uh, designed Painter as a weak supervision based uh, approach to doing content selection for fine tuning QG for a specialized GLAM context. Uh, so our, our context is an example of an application where the question types other than factual or reasoning questions, which are often studied in an LP, are of more importance. Another example for these kinds of scenario is the educational scenario, where uh, you may want Instead of targeting factual questions, which are often about recall or memory, you might want to have questions related to understanding a given concept or applying a given concept. And similarly, in museums, you you can think of other questions like reflective questions, like why do you think the artist uh, uh, showed or something a certain way and so on. Um, so that's all for this task. More details can be found in the paper, and we also have a GitHub repository if you're interested in certain in uh, in the data and code and so on. And if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to reach me. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your attention.